doggone it. <laughs> These things sound so delicious clean. They sound great dirty too, as we'll get into it in a minute. But tell us a little bit about what we have here. More of a modern take on Gretsch glory. Yep. Joe you Carducci know, here, you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Gretsch has been around over 130 years. Started making guitars in the late 1920s. And, uh, and certainly music guitar playing music, if you will, has evolved over the years. Indeed. And we've taken everything that we've known up until this point about building great guitars and incorporated in our new players editions for 2016. And there's a whole mess of features that I'm gonna share with you that, uh, that uh, uh, will enlighten everybody, and especially guys that, that don't own a Gretsch yet. Yes. You know, and, uh, and would like to add a new tool to the toolbox, if you will. Gretsch is a stylization and a, and a sound all of its All of its own, own without doubt. Without and, question. Uh, let's go, let's run down all the features of the new player editions, which is a common denominator in all the new players editions. Let's start with the Bigsby tailpiece. If you look carefully, there's no pins. The string feeds through a hole and wraps around the bar versus balancing, trying to put the little bend in the string and oh, hook it on there. Oh boy, do I know that. And especially like at a gig or something, you break a string, you need to change it fast. Uh, sometimes that can be challenging, yes. <laughs> especially in the dark. Right. But anyway, uh, that's these are the new pinless bridges, uh, which is a great feature. Uh, another important thing about the player's editions, especially for guys that don't own a Gretsch yet, uh, the you know picking up a Gretsch for the first time, uh, what we've done is we brought the strings closer to the body, to your body, if you will. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, the big, deep, uh, hollow body guitars, if you're standing, it's kind of mm -hmm. out here. Yep. What we've done is we made they're now these this series of guitars are two and a quarter inch deep okay so again it brings the strings closer to your body uh it also features uh pin bridges again if you're into light gauge strings right it's it's friendly to that for tuning stability right and added to tuning stability it has shallower locking tuners Which are always good let's turn that around let's take a look at those big neural knobs back there that you would uh, grab hold and and lock the string in place and the whole idea with uh, locking tuners for those who don't know it's to uh, basically when you feed the string through you pull it taut and then lock it right. so um, you, there, so there's no wraps going exactly. around the uh, uh, around the sound around, around the post of the uh, the tuning key which is and not only get, great for keeping the guitar in tune but I've found as I always like to uh, extrapolate on when I'm doing <laughs> clinics and such is that as much as we like bass solos we want them to be shall we say pithy <laughs> and if you break a string live and you only brought one guitar and you go into some kind of pan-Egyptian tuning, not that there's anything wrong with it, uh, when you're playing and you need to change that string quick, you look over the bass player, hey, can you help me out? In the middle of the song, he starts going, hugga digga boogie digga hugga digga boogie digga. Precious time is being wasted. <laughs> so you need to be able to change that string lickety split and the locking tuner allows you to do that. And then you get done quickly, the bass player's had his moment to shine, the crowd has been satiated with low-end frequency, and now you can commence with the rock and once again. That's move on. It's totally. So that's an added feature. Love it. Maybe we could put that in the literature. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> no worries. Underneath the hood or in, inside the bodies, we've incorporated what is called ML bracing. Uh, in 1959, uh, uh, the 6120 uh, Chet Atkins model had what we call trestle bracing. All right. And trestle bracing basically uh, is... Uh, uh, it's spruce wood that kind of looks like the tr uh, uh, a train trestle. A train trestle, and so it connects the top of the body with the back of the body with these trestles. And on trestle bracing, there's four legs that connect the top with the back. Okay. ML bracing, there's only two legs. Right. So what it does is it stiffens the top. Uh, it's, it provides a big wide open sound because it's on hollow body guitar, but it makes it more high gain friendly by okay. stiffening it. And uh, and um, the uh, you know with it with only two legs, it makes the guitar a little bit lighter as All well. Right. And uh, and ML bracing, people go, what does that mean exactly? ML, what does that stand for? Well, the brainchild of ML bracing actually came from uh, the sensei, if you will, at the Gretsch factory in Nagoya, Japan, that produces these guitars. Uh, Masao Tarada is his name, and with Masao Tarada and Mike Lewis, of course, in the lore of Gretsch guitars, uh -huh. was very heavily. Uh, involved in the in the evolution of Gretsch guitars to make them sonically sound great and look great and make sure all the features and appointments were true to the way that they made them in Brooklyn, New York, which 
you know, the, when you look at uh, vintage guitars, usually the ones that were made in Brooklyn, New York, fetch the highest dollars. Sure. But even those guitars, players would get them players who are gigging all the right. time would modify them and do things to uh, uh, to enhance the performance, if you will. Right. We've now incorporated all of those These features. That get, all those modifications are now with the guitar. So let's moving on. Yes. Besides the ML bracing, uh, it has the uh, no low tone pot. You'll notice uh, here's the volume for this pickup volume here, master volume. Mm -hmm. Here's the uh, master tone control. You'll notice that right now it's wide open. There's a little notch you can feel yeah. when it, when you hit it when you got it all the way open you feel that notch that it sits in the tone circuit is it's taken out, it's taken out. Got it. and as you as those who are uh, knowledgeable with the way guitars work especially electric guitars the more wires in the guitar you lose high sure. end so by removing it completely out of the circuit the guitar is going to be as bright as it's going to be which is one of the things that that three-way little toggle switch up here used to do with that's that. right yeah. it's that same concept but it's now a rotary tone control for those guys that prefer that high end frequency bump. Awesome. Uh, it also features the uh, treble bleed circuit for the master volume. So as you roll down the master volume, it still maintains that brilliance. Yes. Yep, yeah, and again, part of the whole thing about maintaining tuning stability, it has the Tusk lubricated nut. Okay. It's featured on the guitar. And uh, the traditional thumbnail uh, uh, position markers on the fretboard, yes. which is d definitely a Gretsch iconic uh, uh, feature. And uh, let's see, man, it's just a rocking great guitar that uh, sonically sounds great. They're real comfortable to play. They're very versatile. They sound great clean right. and they sound awesome with d d lots of distortion as well so excellent. if you're one of those guys that plays your guitar way down low and lots yeah. of gain these guitars rock excellent well, let's hear a little bit more of this rascal we obviously have that glorious neck pickup sound let's hear it with a little bit of pace <laughs> gets old. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit of this middle position here. Bridge pickup, ready? Well, thanks to, uh, I got caught up there. My tongue, my tongue got gratified. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Joe Carducci, and he's showed us the ins and the outs of this glorious weaponry. This is a player's edition Tennessee Rose. Correct. And a glorious sounding axe. Definitely ergonomically dialed in for those who wish to engage in fiendish musical warcraft. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Joe. We'll see you cats soon.